Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, Madveline Fanamadva has spent the expanse of her career pushing the limits of photography. From edgy fashion editorials to commercial advertising, Madveline has mastered it all. Today, we'll learn what inspires this kind of passion and creative ingenuity from the woman herself. Welcome to The Laugh. Thank you, Jeannie. Lovely I'm to so be here. I'm so happy to be interviewing you today. Excellent. You do such incredible work. When did you know that you wanted to be a photographer? I can tell you exactly. <laughs> but actually, exactly. Really? Uh, as a student, I was a very bad student. So at the, uh, until the age of 21, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wasn't interested in anything yeah. or was shining in anything. And then I went on a photo shoot with a um, first year student, a friend. Yeah. And on that shoot, it was like the lights went on. I got it. I knew this is what I wanted to do. Just it was like amazing. That, the penny I've dropped. never had a camera. But I saw things all my life that I couldn't explain to others. Wow. And through the camera, it all started making sense. And then when did you pick up your first camera? Then immediately I wanted to study it. Yeah. But I only had typing at school. I didn't have physics and chemistry, and they didn't want to allow me initially. Really? And uh, for six months, I went to the fr with a friend to... Uh, the Pretoria Technicon at that stage that had yeah. a three-year course and I went to the classes and by the time they had to uh, decide who's in for the next year they really knew me so well that they just said you're welcome wow. and from that day I've never uh, worked as the hard in my life and I've never enjoyed something as much as when I started photography. That is wonderful. I always have such an, a huge appreciation for you. And I know I've worked with a cameraman for so, so long. And uh, the way he sees things through his viewfinder, I find fascinating. Because we all look at the world in completely different ways. Now, I want to know, was your first work, like the first pictures you started taking, were they good? They were fabulous. They were friends of girls. Yeah. Semi-nudes. I wanted to study oh, wow. the body. Played with lighting. Natural light, big windows. So you know, they were good, yes. Yeah. Do you ever look back at some of your work and think, oh, I'm really talented? Like, do you appreciate yourself? You see, with a photographer, you're only as good as your last image. Yeah. And that keeps you very humble. Yeah. And as a, as a person, I don't live in the past. I'm very much in the present. Mm -hmm. So I just know the feeling. I shot things fabulously and I loved it. And that's what's encouraging me to carry on. But I don't really live on the things I've achieved. It's like yeah. every shoot is a new experience and challenge. Now, you grew up in the Free State. What was your journey like, I suppose? And what kind of impact do you think your upbringing and your life had on your career and of your work? I grew up on a beautiful farm. Mm -hmm. Big mountain in front, a lot of nature. So I was running around free. But I remember as a little girl, always the dam in winter with the snow, watching the light reflecting on that ice. I was fascinated. Yeah. And I would watch the light early morning coming through the leaves and the shadows on the wall. And I would know the next morning, it's not the same spot. It's different. So just the open space there, in retrospect now, really assisted me. And, but then yeah. working with people and my emotional IQ, I grew up in a home that was very affectionate and lovable. Yeah. So we touchy loving people and love I that. truly love people. And yeah. I think that's why photography works for me. Brilliant. You also spent a lot of time overseas. Did that, do you think, um, inspire a lot of your work as well? Like just sure. being able to see different cultures and different landscapes? I think the eight years in San Francisco and America really made it for me. Yeah. The first four years was very hard to get into the industry until I'm I sure. realized you've got to join a big studio. You can't be a little one-man business. Yeah. And I managed for the last four years there to be involved with a big studio. We had six photographers. All together they employed like 20 people. So we had big budgets to work with, studio manager that were guiding you. Other, I didn't shoot for me, I shot for the studio. So yeah. other photographers assisting you with light, everybody just helping. And there I learned how to be, first of all, service orientated, yeah. to know your value, how to close a deal, and how to prepare for a shoot. Yeah. And then it's always successful. 
Because there's a business behind photography as well, especially if you're going to freelance as a photographer. You've got to run yourself as a business as well. Totally. So those are brilliant lessons to learn. And coming back home and mm. having that background that the Americans, I mean, you have to talk about money before you talk about anything. Yeah. And I grew up in an upbringing where you don't really talk about money, it's bad manners. Exactly. But quickly I shed that and I knew if I want to manifest in this material world, not as a starving artist, but I really want to have the ability to shoot what I want. Yeah. And yeah, so I know how to close it, do you? You've done such extraordinary work from, uh, you know, really beautiful campaigns, but then also really arty work as well. How do you able to, how are you able to stay quite creatively agile within your career without selling out, I suppose? Yeah, so of course, fashion, not of course, tell you fashion and beauty editorials are my love. Yeah. Especially shooting on location. Yeah. But you get exposure through that, but not financially paid so much. Mm. So you have to dance around that. Uh, and then I changed to the advertising campaigns that's international, that's very lucrative, but yeah. strict guidelines. And as a pro, you follow it. So you have your element, of course, you want to give the client something that they didn't know they're going to get. Exactly. That's always my mission. Even yeah. if it's a strict advertising campaign, like shooting for a cosmetic house that's worldwide, you have to follow that worldwide formula, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And then they brief us tightly, and then I see our models can't do that, and we break what they told us to do, and that's actually what they then choose at the exactly. end. Exactly. So you've got, to, you've got to feel the guidelines, but you've got to also feel your heart and your emotion and let it go and let it be yeah. and let it develop. But you can see you almost do that. Like having a look at your work, you've got the ability to, to capture somebody's energy. Like I saw a lot of pictures that you had taken of Bonang and a lot of your beauty shots as well. You can see like, you can see somebody's feeling. vibe and feeling. Yeah. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. I think early in my life I realized, you know, ears are very feminine. Eyes yeah. are very masculine. Yeah. They undress and insult. So the minute you're in front of my camera, I go in a space of vulnerable space and yeah. feeling what you're feeling sitting there. Yeah. And I mean, I take beautiful photographs myself, but I don't like being in front of the camera. I can just change a no profile, good hair standing there, smile there, and you work. But uh, the person sitting there, especially when you start working with executives, uh, they're so used to being in control. The yeah. magic is to fix their tie and touch their heart at the same spot time and say, excuse me, do you mind me fixing your tie? Yeah. Human little touch, a model that's stressed, you just touch her at the back, give her a little massage, a human care, that exactly. they don't feel it's just work, that they feel you care, and the minute they feel you care, exactly, you get the shot. Do you see yourself as an artist? Sure, that's very hard for me to, uh, to answer. I love what I do, but art and call myself an artist, I'm too humble to do that. <laughs> I, I, I definitely think you are. What is some of your, like if you have to look back at your very long, very amazing career, what are your favorite shots that you've taken? Do you have any that come to mind that really just stay with you? You see, favorite shots, you think in different ways. Yeah. First, after three decades of shooting, I must say, my memory, I can't really remember <laughs> very much what I've done, but when it, I can break it up for you th in three ways. Yeah. First, you think financially. Yeah. I must say, I'm running a business. Which job paid me the most? It was a worldwide campaign. Yes. That, I mean, that happens once in a lifetime. Yeah. Amazing. Secondly, then I think of emotional. I worked on a moments in time calendar for many years. It had to do with cancer patients. Wow. And on that campaign, I actually stopped smoking myself. Okay. Just realizing, you know, it's, this, this assignment is so sacred, I can't stand behind the corner and have a cigarette. So yeah. that, and my mother died of, um, passed away wow. of cancer, and that's why I came back to South Africa initially. So out of an emotional point of view, that's a very important campaign exactly. to me. that really did and change so much of your life. Personally, my own life and seeing how it changed people around me. Yeah. And seeing, realizing people that's so ill, I mean, they don't sweat the little things. Mm you reprioritize and see what's really important yeah, in perspective. life. perspective. And then, okay, if you say favorite picture, I love gardening, I love flowers. I did a shoot with Franz Graber, florist. It took them two days and two nights to put rose petals one by one 
creating coats and garments. Oh, I mean, amazing. a shoot like that, I'm just in awe of the creation. Because yes. after all, I'm only as good as the team I'm surrounding myself yeah. with, bottom line. So, and then creation like that I can use afterwards on, a, on the table as a tablecloth. Yeah. Yeah, that is absolutely amazing. Like a lot of people would maybe have a dream like saying you want a, a shot on Times Square or something like that. What is the one thing that you still want to do or shoot? I want to be able to just shoot what I want and produce yeah. a book and go in the world out there and not really plan and see what happens. I've never done that. I've always been in structure where I've got to create. Yeah. So yeah, meaning not having to work for money. Yes. Oh, that's, that's a dream. That's yeah. a, not that you work anyway. You said that you haven't yeah, had you haven't worked a day in your life. <laughs> oh, true, true. But I mean, <laughs> I, I was still having to pay the bills. Yeah. <laughs> what advice would you give to young photographers who want to to kind of emulate your career? Okay. First of all, really realize you're only as good as your last image. Yeah. Bottom line. Yeah. Don't now think of last month when you were fabulous. It's only now that counts. Secondly. Mm. Only buy things you can afford. Don't buy gear you can't afford. Yeah. As a freelancer, as a creator, as a creative person, I can't create if I'm under financial pressure. Okay. So make sure you don't buy things if you can't afford it. Yeah. Secondly, if you shoot, as a photographer, I don't have eyes behind my head. I shoot in very dangerous situations. I'm only watching what I'm shooting, even if it's fashion in a location, uh, on location or wherever. Yeah. Yet the team, the assistants are very important. They look out for you. And even if I'm like struggling with a shot there, the assistant will tell me, now look there. They help me because I'm so over processing there. So yeah, no, you're only as good as you surround yourself with whom you surround That's you. wonderful advice. Thank you so much for coming ah, through. Lovely, you. So that wonderful was great. chatting to you. Now, Thank anyone you can much. really take a photo, but capturing the story within an image is a true art. Five Roses salutes you and your commitment to your craft, much like Five Roses is committed to bringing you a range of superior tasting teas. We're giving away a fabulous Five Roses gift pack containing an assortment of their delicious teas. To stand a chance to win, simply SMS the keyword Five Roses, your name and city to double three seven. SMSs are charged at 1 Rand 50 each and T's and C's do apply. So visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for details. Join us again this time next week when we will be chatting to yet another exceptional South African woman. And until then, remember that nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses.